It's not what you leave for them, it's what you leave in them. It's not what you leave for them, it's what you leave in them. So it's a, a great saying I heard a couple of years ago. I was also just reminded of it not too recently scrolling through social. It's a great little soundbite, but I wanted to explore it a little bit further. I wanted to break that down. So with respect to leaving money to our children, we all have heard horror stories of someone who gets a windfall and it's gone. But then there are also many, many people that receive money and they add to that generational wealth. They they add to that opportunity that was given. They use the money for what was intended from the upper generation. I've had the privilege to work with a lot of wealthy people or well-to-do people. And I've seen the money go from gr uh, grandparents to parents to grandchildren. I've seen it. I've been the one transitioning the money. Uh, and when it works well and it's done uh, appropriately, like according to the, the wishes of the grandparents, the people that typically have created the wealth, it's, it's beautiful. It, I love seeing that happen. But I wanted to break it down into really three components rather than just a little sound bite because the sound bite sounds great. So there's really three components. One is the what, what we need to leave in our children is the intelligence or the, the intellectual capacity to have the foresight to realize the consequence of the decisions that they're going to make with money. That is just having having them understand what's going to happen when they make a decision and then really thinking taking the time to pause not making rusted, rushed decisions and thinking through those decisions long term and then also educating them enough to know what they don't know and if they get into a position where they feel like they need help that leads me to number two which is they need to understand where to go to get help from trusted advisors, which is a CPA, which is an attorney, which is an insurance professional, which is a CFP, which is an investment manager. They need to understand how to judge character and assess who they can trust and who they cannot trust. So that's number two, what we leave in them. And then the last piece, which is very difficult, uh, is the emotional capacity to handle money or emotional intelligence for money. And what I've seen is, I've seen it go both ways. I've seen wealthy people with three children, two of them are very responsible with money and then one is uh, is just out of control and just, and, and just spends it all. More often than not, what we see is that if mom and dad were good with money, the the children typically take cues and they say, hey, mom and dad were pretty successful. They're well off. I want to have a lifestyle like they did. They gave me the opportunity. They pushed some money down to us. I don't want to blow that. It doesn't always happen, but the emotional capacity piece comes from here. It comes from them realizing that money is not going to buy them any type of perpetual happiness. Money will buy you some temporary happiness. You can go buy a wave runner. I've never seen anybody frown on a, on a jet ski, but it's not going to be perpetual happiness. It's not the cure for depression. It's not the cure for not living up to your potential. It's not the cure for bad relationships. Money is not going to fix any of that crap. So emotional capacity comes from, I don't know if you can necessarily teach it, but we as parents, we try as best we possibly can to leave in our children um, the emotional capacity to handle money, which just comes from the discussion and the example that we leave behind. Say, hey, this stuff is nice, but it doesn't matter. So I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out because I'm you know, I'm not perfect. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. But what I've seen, I'm trying to share some of the lessons that I've seen. And it comes down to educating our kids on, on, the, on the intellectual capacity of the decision making process, identifying, leaving them with the ability to be able to make decisions on who I can and cannot trust and how to assess character, and then leaving in them uh, rock solid emotional uh, self esteem where they're not chasing outside things to fill that gap inside of them.